the Epicor general ledger and primarily the setup of a chart of accounts. So what is the general ledger? Well, the general ledger is obviously a ledger. It's a means of keeping uh, a records of companies' financial transactions. So we're looking at your assets, liabilities, capital, revenue, and expenses. The objective of the general ledger is to track, categorize, group, and summarize financial transactions. This allows us to see where things are happening financially, uh, understand where our, our revenue, our expenses, uh, uh, deploying capital, et cetera, a, a within the company, uh, and to report on those transactions and, a, and to look at performance over time and historical uh, and references. So creating a chart of accounts in the general ledger and set up in Epicord. Uh, so you need to create your chart of accounts and define the structure. So the structure of a general ledger is not uh, etched in stone. There, you have options based on your business, what you're trying to accomplish and report. Uh, but with an Epicor, you must have at least two segments. And one would be the entity and the other would be natural accounts. I'll cover that a bit more as we move forward. Uh, but a common structure that you'll see in many companies is a three segment uh, chart of accounts. Uh, this is what I'm going to cover today. Uh, pretty standard for a, a lot of companies where they have a chart, which is your natural accounts, divisions, and departments. So within each chart, you can have multiple divisions and multiple departments within each division. Now, depending on what you're trying to accomplish and how granular uh, that we're looking for our reporting to be, you know, we can have additional segments based on what you want. It, they can be based on, let's say, location, industry segments, uh, you know, uh, the customers. You can uh, the the uh, the options are endless. It's uh, it's you know how deep and how granular are you looking to have your financial reporting and your GL to be. So to create a GL, you first need to have categories for your chart of accounts. Now, the Epicor has a default categories that you can select and those will be created by the system. There are 18 in the current uh, version of Epicor. You see them here listed out. If you select the checkbox on the setup, which we will do here in a demo shortly, uh, this does create these 18 default categories. You can uh, create additional categories based on your business uh, and you, know, you can add as many as you need. You don't need to create these defaults, but generally, uh, and we recommend that you do so because pretty much you know, these are needed by everybody. And, and why not have the system create them automatically? You can always change the description uh, to fit what you know what you like per se. So uh, to do the creation of a chart of accounts in a GL, you need to create your divisions and, and departments and then your natural accounts. Uh, natural accounts uh, can be set up however you like. Uh, there's a convention that's typically done here in the U.S. and I think primarily in Europe as well, where uh, where the accounts for assets it typically start with one, liability start with two, uh, to equity with three, et cetera here uh, that I have listed out. Uh, these aren't etched in stone, but this makes things more consistent. Uh, and most accountants, you know, I will abide by these. Uh, and the uh, the length of these uh, segments, uh, how many characters are going to describe the segment? Uh, I very often they are done with uh, the, the chart being four characters, the uh, the division being two, and the, the department being two, which will allow you to have you know up to 99 divisions and 99 departments within within each division. You can have longer segments, but uh, you know, you're just going to Typically, you do have a lot of zeros then. So uh, for the example today, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a quick setup in Epicor Kinetic version, and we're going to uh, create a, a chart of accounts. Now, you can have multiple charts of accounts, but only one master a per company. Uh, why would you want to have more than one uh, chart of accounts? Well, sometimes you're going to have reporting that's required by, uh, say, a government entity or within your industry, and then you may have a different way that you want to be able to review your 
uh, AA results with a different structure, uh, with the same data per se, but just displayed in a different way. So you can't have multiple charts of account uh, per company. To create your chart of accounts in a new setup for Epicor, you're gonna need to have fiscal calendars created. Uh, you're gonna need to have a little bit of setup done in your company configuration and you should have a default costing method set. So with that said, I'm going to do a quick demo here, setting up a uh, chart of accounts. So first we're gonna look in company configure. We can see for this company that we're in here, which is Epico 6, we have our chart of accounts master. Obviously we can't select that till after we've created it, but uh, once we create it, we would select it here. And notice that we have multiple charts of accounts for this company. And we'll see those in a second. So uh, from the company config on your finance tab, there's a GL uh, sub tab, and you need to identify which system interface is that you want to interface with the general ledger. Typically, you're going to have accounts payable, accounts receivable, and inventory. Sometimes you'll have payroll. But uh, to have these uh, transactions be posting to the general ledger, for AP, for AR, and for inventory, they have to be selected here. Uh, most companies will have at least these three and perhaps not payroll if you're not using payroll for Epicor. Uh, the other things for setup here, uh, you are allowed to have uh, unbalanced transactions post to the GL. That is that's typically not a standard practice. So we want our transactions to balance. And if they don't, they will be, uh, they won't post. So we're going to leave, leave these unchecked. You can also have the current date when you're mashing transactions, uh, but typically you're going to want to do the actual uh, you know, uh, system date of those of those transactions. So typically this is how we're going to set up here. Uh, and the a balance options, you can have a batch or daily batch. Uh, again, those are optional, but we do have to have a default value for our book mode and for our journal code. Typical book mode is often single. You can't have multi-book. Uh, this one is set up for single. So and once you set that up and you've had transactions, you can't change that. Our default journal, uh, you know, there are these options. Typically, you know, we see the general, but that needs to be set before we can create our chart of accounts. And the one other thing that has to be uh, set up in company config is your taxes. Uh, here for GL, you have to have a tax entry mode, and you can either have no taxes, which you know no tax transactions will, will be recorded in the GL, or you can have just journal lines or journal lines or tax adjustments. We usually I recommend the journal lines or tax adjustments because that gives you the option to do either one. Once these things are set in company config, and we have a fiscal calendar, we can create a uh, chart of accounts. So that is from financial management, uh, general ledger setup, and then uh, chart of accounts. So here is the chart of accounts. Uh, and let's just clear this. We will take a look and see what exists currently. It's, it, it shows that we currently have six charts of accounts in here. We'll just bring those in. And if we look at the one that we were looking at, which is the main, we can see that that is a chart division A department. We're going to create another one right now. Uh, and for today's example, we're going to do a new chart of accounts, and we're going to call this Lunch and Learn. And we have to identify the separator character. When you see a GL uh, code, it, it's going to be it's going to have so many characters for your chart, so many for your division, and so many for your department. For today's example, we're going to do a pretty standard setup with four for your chart, and then two for our division and two for department. So the separator character is what's between those characters. And we're going to use a dash, which is very common. Once we've done that, I can go ahead and save that chart. Now, there's no segments here at all we can see. So we're going to have to add our segments. Uh, and again, this is going to be chart uh, division department. So we're going to start with here. This is a new segment. This is going to be our chart. And you can have an abbreviation. It isn't necessary. And then we have to define the length. So typically with uh, uh, chart of accounts, we're going to say that, that the minimum and maximum are going to be the same. So it forces you into having a consistent uh, output 
on those segments. So we're going to go with our, our charts going to be four and four um, by definition, because this is going to be the natural uh, accounts. It's going to be a mandatory here, and it's going to be included in your details and your summary balance. If I go ahead and save that, and we'll see that we have the chart and we have that chart length. I'm going to go with our next segment now. And this is going to be our division. And here, our length is going to be two and two. Okay, so we're going to have that to be two and two. And you see here, this defaults to optional. So this is going to either force you to have that a division in every entry or not. Uh, typically, we would say to I go with mandatory. So again, all the information and it's consistent. I, I typically I recommend that we include all of our segments in our balance options here for the a reporting. So and you see now when I save that, our chart length, it went to seven. That's that's the four for the um, chart, the dash, and then the two for the division. We're going to add in our department now. And again, we're going to go with two for our length, maximum and min. I also like to set these as mandatory. And now these are alphanumeric, so you can have two alphas as well, but most times you're going to see numbers uh, for your setup here. I'm going to make both of those included in our detail and summaries. And now we have created our new chart of accounts. Now, this is just the structure. Uh, today's presentation won't go into creating the actual accounts. Those need to be done once we have the, the, the chart created. Uh, this is a new chart. Now, the other thing that you can do once it's created is what's your display order? So when we see these uh, displayed, it's going to be four dash division two dash two department. And we can alter that uh, after the fact and say, you know what? I want to see my chart, then my division, and then my department and change how it's displayed when it shows up on reports and in, uh, on your screen. Now, the and one further thing Epicor offers that I'll just mention is you can have what's called dynamic segments. And those are when a transaction occurs based on the posting rules, depending on what entity is involved in that transaction, uh, those segments can be populated automatically. So if a uh, accounts payable transaction occurs in division two, it's going to populate you know, uh, in that division or dynamic segment is. In fact, I believe we have one here that has, yeah, here we go. These this particular chart has dynamic segments that are uh, that are populating based on a customer or employee or a GL reference type. So in addition to your standard chart division and department, uh, the system will also tag on an additional piece of, of information. If this is a customer record, you know, who that customer is. Uh, and you can see here when we look at that, it's going to have on here, you know, uh, uh, you can identify what piece of information, you know, is going to be like the customer ID uh, here, for instance, is going to be populated uh, by the dynamic setup. So that is the setup of a chart of accounts. Want more Code of Bears Lunch and Learn? Check out our channel for more videos or contact us on our website for registration information.